slide, I'd like to tell you an easy way to calculate the area, moment of inertia of a circle. Now there's lots of ways to do this, and your textbook or uh, Google or whatever, you can certainly find lots of ways to do this. A lot of them are complex and hard to understand. I think I have a way here that's uh, maybe simpler to understand and is based on uh, the area moment of inertia of a rectangle, which I think we all know, at least at this point. So let's draw half a circle. Okay, here's half a circle, sort of. Here's my sketch of half a circle. And the upper part of that circle looks like this. The equation is square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, well, if we want to look at just one little box on that circle, I'm going to draw a rectangle, and this really is truly a rectangle, all right? This is uh, akin to something you would have learned in a calculus class. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that this circle, this half a circle, is made up of a succession of smaller and smaller rectangles. And they really are rectangles. Their width is dx, okay? And their height, which I'll put right there, okay, is uh, defined by that expression right there, square root of r squared minus x squared. So h of x is twice this, the uh, square root expression here. So it's 2 square root r squared minus x squared. All right, so if we want to find the area moment of inertia of a rectangle, we know that. That's 1 12 base times height cubed. Well, we know those expressions now. 1 over 12, of course, is just a number. The base is dx. Right? That's the width over here. That's that distance right there. And the height, we now know, is 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared. And we'll take that whole expression and cube it. So that's the area moment of inertia of one rectangle. Well, how do I find the area moment of inertia of a whole bunch of those? Well, I just add them up. And if uh, our expression dx over here represents an infinitesimally narrow rectangle, that adding process is really integration. So if you want to think about it this way, integration is really just expensive adding. So the area moment of inertia of my circle is, let's see, 2, because I'm, I'm going to put that 2 out front, because the area moment of inertia of, of an entire circle is equal to twice the area moment of inertia of half a circle. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to r. That distance here is r, the radius of the circle. And I'm just going to put my area moment of inertia of the rectangle expression in here. So there's 2 square root r squared minus x squared cubed dx. Well, let's clean up some of these uh, uh, constants out front. If I multiply 2 times 2 cubed, I'm going to get 16 over 12 square or integral from 0 to r. And then I'm going to say r squared minus x squared. I'm going to raise that uh, uh, expression right there to the 3 halves power because I'm cubing a square root and square root is to the 1 half power. So I'm just going to put the dx in there. Well, I can make one more simplification. I can divide through by 4, so I get 4 over 3. And then I'll just write this out again. 3 over 2 dx. Well, there's no way to avoid it. I'm eventually going to have to integrate that. I cheated a little bit. I went into uh, Wolfram Integrator, built into Mathematica, or actually the web incarnation of Mathematica. And that turns out to be pi over 4 r to the 4. And since d equals 2r or r equals d over 2, the area moment of inertia of a circle is pi over 64 d to the 4th. And that's the expression you see in the book. All right. So double check what you'll see. We've seen that before. You can look that up. So there you go. This is a very simple integral, and it's based on the idea up here of describing my circle as a bunch of slices that are all rectangles and just adding them up in the x direction. I hope this helps.
and I'll see you next time.